today on CBC Sports. The Subway World Gymnastics Challenge. Now, from Cops Coliseum in Hamilton, here is your host, Terry Leibel. Thanks very much, Bob Boving. A shot of the Cops Coliseum located in Hamilton, Ontario, about a 60-kilometer drive to the west of Toronto. As our cameras come indoors, listen, this is a world-class facility. It has already hosted the World Championships of Basketball, Junior Hockey. Next spring, it is the curling world that comes to Hamilton. And 10,000 people are expected on hand today. This is a facility that is in a frenzy in anticipating the 1995 Subway World Gymnastics Challenge. Listen, you look at this sport, over the past quarter of a century, it has emerged from the local gymnasiums to become front and center in the world of sports. And all you have to do is look at the schedule for next summer's Olympic Games in Atlanta. The prime time scheduling for live viewership is geared around this sport. It was the first ticket to sell out. Over 34,000 will watch each and every day at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Meanwhile, 10,000 are here strong at COPS. Seven of the 22 competitors today are Canadians. And with more on the specifics of this Subway World Gymnastics Challenge, I send you high atop the Cops Coliseum and join my colleagues, Scott Russell and Carol Orchard. All right, Terry, it's nice to have you here. And I'll tell you what, this is one of the finest international fields in the sport of gymnastics that we will say on the way to the Atlanta Olympics in the summer of 1996. Carol, you and I were at the recent World Gymnastics Championships in Sabai, Japan. Many of the World Championship medalists are here. Let's talk about the men's field, first of all. The Chinese are the current powerhouse. They're here, and they may be tough to beat today. Oh, Scott, you are so right. Wang Wang Dong is a two-time world champion on the team in Dortmund and on the team in Sabai. He's also a specialist on Pommel Horse, the toughest event. He's ranked number two in the world. But Canadian champion Chris Burley has a couple of specialties all his own. He's ranked among the top 20 on floor, and he does a world original vault that only one other man can do nearly as well as he can. But the real story has to be those two young Russian stars, Podgorny and Bondarenko. They've been brought here by Leonid Arkaya. Leonid is not only the top coach in Russia, he is the only coach in the world to be in charge of both the men's team and the women's team, and he's won medals with both. You bring in the women's field, it is certainly a stellar one here at Cops Coliseum this afternoon. There is an Olympic champion here, there are world championship medalists here, including the newly crowned and underrated all-around world champion Lilia Podkopaeva of Ukraine, and she was a very late entrant. She absolutely was. In fact, it was really difficult to reach Lilia in the Ukraine, but when they finally did, she was delighted to return. But talk about pressure. She is the new world champion, and this is her first competition since winning that title. She doesn't want to lose now. But what a wonderful opportunity for our Canadian women to train all week, shoulder to shoulder, with a world champion. They've worked hard since the bye. They've regrouped, and they are ready to strut their stuff here at home. Podko Paeva is the current powerhouse, but also the next generation is here at Cops Coliseum. Maybe some future stars in the sport. Oh, boy, and they're red hot. Alexander Marinescu from Romania. She's the junior European champion, but she made the big jump to senior this year, and she was a very important member of that gold medal world championship team in Sabai. But the talk of the town undoubtedly will be 12-year-old Alexis Brion from the United States. She's hot, jam-packed for teens. She'll steal your heart. All right, Carol, there are 11 women, 11 men in this field for the World Challenge. Should be some great competition here at COPS. Terry, back to you. Absolutely, Scott. The giants of gymnastics are here. Also in our two-hour show, we'll have a conversation with the newly crowned world champion herself, the 17-year-old from the Ukraine, Lilia Potkopayeva. Also, we'll continue to tap Carol's knowledge with her patented shock talk. And, of course, while we're all here, the all-around individual champions among the men and women. Rotation number one, right after this. Coliseum in Hamilton and CBC's coverage of the 95 World Gymnastics Challenge. The women compete on four apparatus, the men on six. We're about to start rotation one. There's young Russian Eugeny Podgorny, only one of a stable, a very talented gymnast in his country, and still smarting after failing to win a team medal at the recent World Championships. Я надеялся быть в тройке по-любому. Вторым, третьим, не первым, ну если не первым, то вторым, третьим думал, что будем. Тут даже в тройке не были. У меня был шок. Actually, the entire gymnastics world was shocked that Russia didn't medal in Sabai. Evgeny is very talented, 
He just performed a front tumbling line, and it's undoubtedly the most popular line in men's gymnastics. Virtually everyone does it. Oh, but no one does that line. Very nice. Double-double in a tuck position. One of the great tumblers in the world. He wound up eighth in the event final at Sabai at the World Championships. And Scott, you know with talent like this, Russia just needs to pull it all together. They're going to be there in Atlanta, and they're going to be hard-pressing the Americans, the Chinese. We'll also see Russian Alexei Bondarenko today, and remember Alexei Nimov, the young Russian superstar, is there. They should, as you say, be very strong in Atlanta. He's getting set up for his third tumbling line. A little shaky in the scale. That's only a minor deduction. Now he's got a really focused, really go. You can see a little fatigue setting in. Oh, excellent. Kicks it out. Full twisting double back. Nails it perfectly. But Gorny of Russia, they were fourth at the team championships in Sabai. Here's the reason this line is so popular. Front handspring, front layout, layout gets a D.1 into a front fold. That's an E.2. When you put it all together, two tenths for that, five tenths total bonus. 18-year-old Eugeni Podgorny scores a 9-7 on the floor here at the World Challenge. From China, One of the top Zhuan. Chinese gymnasts, Liu Zhuan, 16 years old, from Hunan. She was on the team silver medal effort for China at the World Championships in Sabai. The Chinese are really coming on. Oh, they really are. And Scott, this event used to be a downfall for China. No longer. They've really improved. Yurchenko, one and a half. Really well done. The women will get two vaults here, as they do in international competition. Another look at the first. Now, take a look at her takeoff on the board. She's slightly to the left side. Makes her land a little bit to the left on the map, but that's only a minor deduction. She nails that landing. 9775, the first vault score for Liu Zhuan of China. Here she goes for the second. Now, she's using the Yurchenko entry. That's round off onto the board. There's the one and a half. Nicely done. The Yurchenko vault is easy to gain momentum, get big tricks out of, but it's very difficult to be precise. There's the one and a half twist, blind landing. She saves it really well. Liu Zhuan, the Chinese national champion, 9.75 on the second vault for an average of 9.762. Chris Burley, the reigning Canadian champion, 20th on the floor exercise at the Sabai World Championships, but he's still doing some fine tuning as he gets ready for Atlanta. Men's floor from yeah, I've changed a lot of my routines. After I came back uh, from, from Japan, my coach, I have a new coach as of June, and uh, he's starting a whole lot of new things. Like, I'm, I've changed my vault, I've changed my floor routine. I'm in the process of changing my rings and my parallel bar. So I'm changing everything around, and this is going to be a good forum for me to try out a few new things, and especially in a hometown crowd, which is really good. Scott, you'll notice tape on his left ankle. It's been quite sore since Worlds. We weren't even sure if he was going to compete today. Oh, but compete he is. That was a huge, full-twisting double back. Now, this is the line he's known for. World original, does it beautifully. Whipped one and a half, front full. Big bonus line there. Can't underestimate how confident Chris Burley is on the floor. He has ranked in the top ten in the past in the world on this apparatus. The men all show a side tumbling pass. Chris is beautiful. Double twisting front layout. One of the best. Now you know that ankle's got to be causing him some pain right now. Getting ready for the last tumbling line. Okay, a simple double back due to the ankle, but done in the classic Chris Burley style. 21-year-old Chris Burley, born in Truro, Nova Scotia, one of the finest floor workers in the world. Now, just look at the amplitude Chris gets here. Proof positive, you know he's training double-doubles at home and competing them beautifully. 9-4 will be a disappointment uh, for Chris here at this World Challenge. Now, Ivan Tusek, 15 years old, born in Kitchener, Ontario. Her club is the Cambridge Kips, and she's coached by Elvira Sadi. Ivan Tusek is the rising Canadian star at the World Championships. Great style. No doubt about it. This is one of Ivan's weaker events, if you can call that weak. That was a great vault. 
Yurchenko half on front layout, but she really lays it out. Good speed down the runway. Nice and straight on that beat board. Now watch. There's the front layout. Really pulls it. Two vaults, as we said. 9-7. Good score on the first vault for two sec. Now the Yurchenko entry gives this value a 9-9 start value. Good layout again. Just difficult to anticipate that blind landing. Yvonne Tusek, the top Canadian in individual competition at the World Championships in Savai. 9.75 for the second vault. That raises her average to a 9.725. Here's Wang Wadung of China. We talked about the fact that he was part of the World Championship gold medal team for China. 23 years old. He also won a silver medal on the pommel horse. Now, this isn't an event he's actually known for, but he's got some big tricks, and that's one of them right there. Ooh, good save. Now, he didn't go out of bounds on that full-twisting double back. You're allowed to touch the white line, but not go past it. There's that bonus line we talked about. Very popular. The men are all receiving five-tenths bonus. Now, this is his specialty. This is where he gets to put his pommel horse work on the floor. Beautiful Gugeladze. Nice strength and flexibility. Chinese becoming dominant in men's team competition. They also won the gold medal in 94 at Dortmund, Germany. This is his little side pass. Oh, not enough air time. He didn't really punch up before the full twist, causing him to land sideways. Difficult to regain his composure now. He plans to finish with the same line he started with. That's not a deduction in men's gymnastics. A little tougher to do. He's going to be fatigued. A little short. Needs a little more air time. 23-year-old Wang Wadung of China completes his first apparatus. The floor exercise has to be considered the favorite in this field. And 9.35 will hurt to start as he chases the championship here in Hamilton. Here is the world champion, Lilia Podkopayeva, 17 years old of Donetsk, Ukraine. Underrated, no one expected her to win in Sabai, but she was so consistent and so strong. Oh, she was, and this is how she won the world title. She debuted a brand new vault. It's a vault and a half. There it is. Yurchenko half on, front pike half off. And just nailed the landing straight up. Scott, this looks like an instant replay of world. She did it just as well there to become the world champion. There's a half on, front pike, half off. Looking at a 9.85 as her first vault. She'll take a second now. They'll average the score. Now, we've talked about start value. This one is at a 10. It should be out of 11. There's a lot happening in a short period of time. She had to dig out the landing, small hop. So intricate. There's the Yurchenko half on, front pike half off. Her timing needs to be so precise. Second vault, a 9-8. The average, though, 9-8-2-5 puts her immediately into first position. Still plenty to come from Cops Coliseum as we continue the Subway World Gymnastics Challenge, including a Canadian veteran who will try and hit all the right notes on this stage in familiar territory. Welcome back to the 1995 Subway World Gymnastics Challenge. You know a sport is huge when you can recognize some of its participants by first names only. In the 70s, it was Olga and Nadia. In the 80s, it was Mary Lou. Well, in the 90s, it could very well be Lilia. She is the latest in a long line of divas who dominate this most graceful of sports. Lilia Podkopayeva is gymnastics' brightest light. Her homeland is Ukraine, a desperate fragment of the once formidable Soviet Union. Bleak and unassuming, it has a history of greatness in gymnastics. Once a part of the greater whole, it's made the survivors struggle. Если был бы союз команды, как всегда, команда БССР была бы сильнее всех. Но, к сожалению, союз распался, и поэтому все, каждый будет сам за себя. Я же 
откуда, в какой-то степени мы чаще стали выезжать. Для кого-то это лучше, для кого-то хуже. In Sabah, Japan, it was a near perfect flight and subsequent landing that secured her title as world champion. Her emotion was unbridled. Never the favorite. Lilia had been close before, but still the perfection that a champion craves eluded her. Not this time. Я надеялась на Кубок Европы, который проходил в Италии. Но, к сожалению, я не заняла там, даже в тройке не была, потому что опорный прыжок выполнила не столько удачно, как хотела. Много решала доскок, а я как раз не очень сделала. А чемпионат мира мне получился опорный прыжок в доскок. Я сделала новый элемент, который, может быть, немножко помог. Да, на больных упражнениях, который немножко помог этому первому месту. После выигрыша на чемпионате мира мне бы хотелось также постараться выступить на Олимпийских играх. Это высшая ступень. К этому шли очень долго. И будем стараться там выступить то есть так же, как на мире. From tiny Ukraine to much larger than life. Lilia has taken her place amongst the giants of gymnastics. The World Challenge very much a litmus test for Lilia Podkopayeva. As you mentioned, Carol, her first major competition since winning the World Championship, and it's essential for her to win. You just don't want to lose now. She's the World Champion. Finally, she has what she's always wanted, and you just don't want to lose now. But this is a great event for Lilia. She's one of the few gymnasts that can make it beautiful. Look at that hop giant full, two in a row, right to a ginger, and an overshoot. That's four release moves in a row. Won a silver medal on the uneven bars at the World Championships. Her dismount is really pretty, too. Watch this. Half in, half out. Let go a little early, but that'll only be a very small deduction. Vodko Payeva already scored a 9825 on the vault. Here's a look. I love this camera angle. It gives you the same perspective the judges have from viewing the routine from the side. Look how wide those bars are. Mm -hmm. Result a 975 for Podko Payeva on the uneven bars. So she continues to roll, continues to get the good scores from the judges. This is Alexei Bondarenko, 17 years old of Russia. His club, the Moscow Dynamo, and he's coached by Valery Alfasov and Vladimir Artemov. I have been so impressed watching him train all week. He's only 17, and this kid throws every trick in the book. Just like that. Really nice double layout. Now, if imitation is the finest form of flattery, then Chris Burley should be pretty impressed with this line. Bondaranko uses the same one Chris does. Little pommel horse work there. That's that world famous Google Adzi. Nice straddle split position. It's important the gymnasts show off what they're good at. Bondaranko is strong and flexible. Very athletic performer. You know, we saw him warm on the high bar at a Hamilton High School the other day. Release skills all over the place, and he's cut from some kind of cloth, but he's a great athletic performer. He really is. And we're going to see a lot more of him in Atlanta. He's not even throwing half the tricks he can do here. Nicely done. Kicks it out. Spots the landing. Full twisting double back. 17-year-old Alexei Bondarenko of Russia, one of the younger members of the Russian team, but certainly on the rise. Now, this is a, a side view of his double layout. Look how laid out he is. You just know he's twisting that. Multiple twists at home. Getting ready for Atlanta. 9575, the score on the floor exercise for a Bondarenko of Russia. Romanians always very strong. This is Mirella Tugerland, 15 years old. Three straight national junior titles for Tugerland. Now she does the same vault Yvonne does, except she uses Sukahara entry. So there's no round off onto the board. The judges consider this more difficult to do without the round off, so her start value is going to be out of 10. There's the half off front layout. Holds her position on the landing, 9 7 for Tugerland, the first vault, and now sets up on the runway for the second. Now, on the first vault, she did.
a little bit. So that cuts the layout. She's a little bit tight. There's going to be a deduction for that. Let's see. Yes, she grabs her legs again. That'll be a slight deduction. It's not perfectly laid out. Romanians, of course, won the team championship at Sabai. 9-7-2-5, the second vault, for an average of 9-7-1-2, Mirella Tugerlan of Romania. Now Liu Zhuan of China on the uneven bar. And you're in for a treat. China is so innovative on bars. Lots of amplitude. They fly on this event. Those are her inverted giants. Beautiful Pike Jaeger right to the overshoot. Now watch this. This is what makes them so special. Beautiful transition skills. A lot of gymnasts just do a simple squat on and grab the high bar. Not the Chinese. Beautiful flight. Takachev nice and high. The coach steps in to assist, but she's all right. Getting ready for the dismount. Double layout. The acknowledged leader of the Chinese national team, Liu Zhuan, on the uneven bars, and great reaction from her coach. You can see how wide the bars are. That allows her to swing right through virtually no pike at all at the bottom. There's that high-flying pike Jaeger. Beautifully done. 9-7-5. She's establishing a battle with Lilia Podkopaeva of Ukraine, the world champion, here at the World Challenge. And this is 20-year-old Jason Hardabura of Canada. Born in Toronto, Ontario, competes for the Burlington Boys Gymnastics Club and coached by Lauren Bobkin. This is actually an event that intimidates many gymnasts, but it's one of Jason's stronger events. He really attacks the pommel horse. I love the way he works this. Beautiful. Shavado on the way back. Now watch this. Nice, nice flared work. Now take a look at his hands. He's getting ready for his specialty. Both his hands are outside those pommel handles. That's wide arm flares. That's a D part. Beautiful work. He's showing scissors now. That's required by all male gymnasts. They have to put that in the routine somewhere. Getting ready for just the dismount left to go now. Beautifully done. Jason Hardover, a fifth all around at the national championships in Vancouver, won a gold medal at those nationals on this event, the pommel horse. A tough event, but Jason has come a long way working this horse. Nice flare work, complete concentration, good confidence. 9-2 for Jason Hardabura on what many say is the most difficult event for men, the pommel horse. Carol, you talked about 12-year-old American Alexis Breon in the opening. She is of diminutive stature with a huge regard for an American Olympic champion named Mary Lou Retton. Um, I did look up to Mary Lou Retton because, um, you know, she went to the Olympics and won, and... One day I hope to be in her position. Scott, she is just so tiny. It must be an incredible feeling to run full speed down the vault runway to something that's taller than you are. Good vault. Your chink will have on front layout. Alexis Breon is only 12 years old. There's her coach, Jim Walker. Now, actually, the vault's really well done. She just has a little difficulty anticipating the blind landing, but you know, that's going to come with a little more experience. 9-6 is the first result for Alexis Brion of Idaho Falls, Idaho. Now she's planning to do the same vault again, and it's a big vault for a little one like her. There it is. Half, same problem, just a little bit of trouble on that blind landing. She was third all around at the U.S. Nationals in the junior division, got a long way to go. 9-4-7-5, the second vault. The average is a 9-5-3-7. She's the youngest competitor here in the World Challenge. Now, talk about a guy who's master of his own destiny. Wang Wadong, silver medal at the World Championships on the pommel horse. He's spectacular, or can be, on this event. Oh, yes, he is, and he doesn't waste any time. Look at that. Immediately impressing the judges with that single pommel work. Spins around on one for a while and gets right on to the other one. Single pommel work is difficult because the base of support is so small. The room for error, huge. Nice flare work. Right up to handstand and right down again. Very impressive. What the judges love about his routine is the impeccable amplitude. Look how stretched he is. Good rhythm. You can tell just by the duration of the routine. There's a lot jam-packed into this. Up for the dismount. Nails it. Wang Wadong of China, silver medal on the pommel in Sabai.
tremendous upper body strength required for this event. Now take a look at this. This is the impeccable flare up to handstand. And unlike other gymnasts, he doesn't break his form or his rhythm. That is truly world class. No doubt about that. He is truly world class. Look at this score, a 9-7, almost unheard of on the pommels. Alan Nole, 28 years old, the Canadian captain, the consummate team player. We asked him to reflect on Canadian disappointment at the World Championships. Well, we got back from Sabai. It was obviously pretty disappointing for everyone. Uh, the first couple of weeks back, it was hard to train. It was uh, a bit of a bit of a downtime for everyone. But um, you know, getting ready for this meet, I guess, has helped helped me get over the disappointment in Sabai, and hopefully uh, we can end uh, end the year on a good note. And he's certainly starting on a great event. Alan can fly on floor. Right there, double lamp, incredible amplitude. He has nice, secure landings, and that's what impresses the judges. There's that bonus line, five tenths. Two front layouts right to the front full. And what makes every routine Alan does on every event so interesting is that he's innovative. And here's an example of that. A simple side pass, now watch this. Needs to show some flexibility, but he has such an innovative way of getting into it. Alan, the runner-up here last year at the World Challenge, two times an Olympian. As we said, he led Canada to the gold medal in team competition at the 94 Commonwealth Games in Victoria. Ooh, a little trouble there. Didn't hold it for the required two seconds. That'll be a slight deduction, but here's the big line. Full twisting double back, nice and high. Well, there he is, the crowd favorite, 28-year-old Alan Nole of Canada. Here's the replay. Nice tumbling technique. Full twisting, double back, sees the landing, nails it down. 9-5, a very respectable score for Alan Nole of Canada on the floor. All right, taking a look at the early standings on the men's side. The two young Russians, Podgorny and Bondarenko, are 1-2. Alan Nole of Canada currently third. Over to the women, as expected, the world champion Lilia Podkopayeva is off to a good start. Then it's Liu Zhuan of China, Ivan Tusek of Canada. Coming up from COPS, the European Junior Champion. Back to the World Challenge at COPS Coliseum in Hamilton, Ontario. Scott Russell along with Carol Orchard and Terry Leibel. They're setting up now for rotation number three. There are the women's uneven bars. 15-year-old Shannon McEachern is a Canadian with growing international experience. She's been to the Pan Am Games, the World Championships, and now has a chance to compete at home. Well, to see if this competition is going to be really exciting because I have all my family and friends cheering me on. Uh, usually we compete in other countries and they don't get a chance to um, see me perform. Like, like so they get to see me on TV, so it's going to be very experience. And Scott, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Shannon on TV in the future. She is a little powerhouse. Lots of big tricks. Nice uprise to handstand. Now this is what the judges want to see. Intricate, twisting, combination work right to a nice release. Very well done, Ginger. It's not stopping there. Good free hip work on the high bar. Backstraddle to handstand counts as a release move also, and she does lock it into a good handstand position. Shannon, just 15 years old, gymnastics Mississauga. And here's the big dismount, double layout. Hey, that's a nice routine. There's her coach, Alex Bard. She's also coached by Svetlana Dekteva out at gymnastics Mississauga. One more look. Here's the hop, half into a half. I bet Alex is working that hop giant full at home. She's halfway there now. Now look at the height on that ginger. Impeccable form, well done. And a nice 9-6 for 15-year-old Shannon McEachern of Canada. Here's Kip Simons, 23 years old of the United States. Interesting story here. He's named after Kip Kano, the gold medalist in athletics at the 1972 Olympics in Munich. And this is a great event for Kip. Super strong in the upper body, which is exactly what you need to be good on ring. Nice Maltese presses to a planche. Wow. That requires total strength. Nice swing to inverted cross. 
On trying another inverted cross. He's holding it long enough. The judges want to see those positions for two full seconds. Kip helped the U.S. win the gold medal at the 95 Pan American Games in Argentina. Now, Scott, he has built up so many bonus points with those incredible strength moves from the beginning. He can virtually get off now. All he has left to do is the dismount. Double layout. It's an easier dismount, but as I said, he's guaranteed a big score with that incredible strength. Kip Simons of Media, Pennsylvania. He scores a 9.575. He competes for Ohio State University when he's not with the U.S. national team. Veteran German Peter Nicky Farrow. His country is attracting a number of ex-Soviet gymnasts, and somehow in that country it seems to be working. Gut, ich sag mal, zum Anfang gab es ein paar Probleme mit, vor allen Dingen weil es auch wegen der Sprache her beide nicht so gut Deutsch sprechen konnten. Und mittlerweile sprechen beide sehr gut Deutsch. Also wir verstehen uns auch. Ich glaube, dass wir auch in den letzten zwei Jahren dadurch, dass wir eigentlich richtig in die Mannschaft reingewachsen sind, würde ich sagen, und auch dazu gehören zu uns. Now on the pommel horse, 24 years old, from Magdeburg, Germany. He has the exact right quality to be good on pommel horse, and that's mental focus, mental intensity. Showing some good single pommel work. But you notice he puts his hand down there on the leather. Good single work, but not as long as the Chinese do it. And that's the difference. Very nice extension. Breaking into the required scissors. He doesn't break his rhythm at all, which is important. The judges are looking for good speed and, of course, the stuck landing. German's very disappointed with a seventh place team finish at the World Championships. Peter Nicky Farrow on 955 here on the pommel horse. And now to Romanian Mirella Chugerlan on the uneven bars. And she's off to a very good start here at the World Challenge. And you'll notice she doesn't wear any grips at all. They have a choice. She prefers to feel the bar with her bare hands. She likes the way she can get a good grip and control her maneuvers. Just like that, hop giant full, right to a little ginger. Now she's a tiny girl, and that ginger doesn't have a lot of amplitude to it. A little more experience, I bet you'll see that fly by Atlanta. The Romanians are known for great consistency, but not a lot of amplitude on this event, especially when you compare them to the Chinese. Good double layout, holds on to the landing. 1994 Puerto Rico Cup. She won three gold medals as well as a silver. Here's one more look. If you look at her swing down, now watch. She pulls into the bar just a little bit, playing a little safe. Has to bend her arms to catch the bar. Great overhead shot there. A 9-7 for Mirella Tugerlan, the young Romanian competitor, only 15 years of age. Now to the rings. And this is a great event for the Germans traditionally. Oliver Walther, 23 years old. And he does well on this event. His strength to body weight ratio is incredible. And that's what you need to be good on rings. Great strength. Starts right away with uprise, swing to a Maltese, slouch position. Front uprise, look at that L cross. Pulls it to an L sit. And there's another Maltese. Now, the judges want to see those positions held, and held for a long, agonizing two seconds in some cases. This event owned on the world stage by Italian Yuri Kecki. They call him the ringmaster. Andreas Becker, a German who's had a great deal of success here, but now Oliver Balther, just the dismount. It's a double layout, and he sticks it. There's his coach, Uwe Ronneberg. is replay. L cross pull to Maltese. Now, his positions could be held a little longer and certainly a little lower. Now, look, he rises up. He should have his hands right in line with his shoulders, but that's a tough trick. Oliver Walther of Germany scores a very nice 9-6 on the rings. This is Elena Grosheva of Russia, 16 years old. And a great international resume. She was 21st all around at the World Championships in Savai, and that's pretty respectable company. And she loves this event. We, we asked her about it. She said, I love to fly, and this is the event I fly on. And there it is. 
Nice to catch up. Great amplitude. She swings really well. Nice, innovative work like that Russian giant. Beautiful Jaeger right through to Pax Salto. The judges want to see big release moves with that amplitude, and she's challenging the Chinese. Giant half. Nice double front dismount. Elena Groseva of Russia made a couple of event finals in Sabai, the vault and the beam, where she was seventh and eighth, respectively. These are her uneven bars. Great view of this high-flying Tkachev. Perfect form. Now watch, she hops her hands. That's her Russian giant, an inverted giant. Now watch this. Pike Jaeger, well above the bar. Perfect amplitude. Gorgeous. Pak Salto. And a 9.775 for Elena Grosheva of Russia. To update the standings as we move toward the midway point, Lilia Podkopayeva has hit both routines and continues to lead. Then it's Liu Zhuan of China, Mirela Tugerlan of Romania, Ivan Tusek, the top Canadian, is fifth. On the men's side, Wang Wadong owns two world championship medals and now leads here. German Peter Nicky Farrow is next. Right now, let's go down to the floor and join Terry Leibel. Thanks very much, Scott. Of course, excellent gymnastic competition underway here at Cops Coliseum. Joining me now is the corporate representative for Subway Canada, Terry Hughes. And Terry, explain to our audience why the affiliation between your company and amateur athletics gymnastics specifically. Well, this is a perfect extension for Subway. We promote the natural, healthy lifestyles with our menu, and it's just perfect for us. This venue, Cops Coliseum, is absolutely perfect for this event, and you've got upwards of 10,000 people here. That's got to please you. Oh, absolutely ecstatic. We have our logo on the bibs uh, all over the wall boards. We're really ecstatic about the whole thing. Listen, in Canada, we have a situation where corporations like yourself have to step forward and pick up some of the tab. So in this sense, I guess it is a healthy situation both corporately and for amateur sport. It's a win-win situation for both parties. We're really ecstatic about it, and we look forward to doing it in the future. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back with more from the 1995 Subway World Gymnastics Challenge right after this. Back at Cops Coliseum in Hamilton in the Subway World Gymnastics Challenge, 22 athletes from seven countries in the hunt for both the men's and women's all-around titles. And as Carol Orchard explains in this edition of Chalk Talk, the road to get here has been long, winding, and narrow. We've all seen it. Top-level gymnasts making the most treacherous event of all appear to be child's play. But was it always so easy for them? Absolutely not. The road to success on beam is a long and bumpy one. So how do they get those intricate tumbling lines up to regulation height? Remember, the beam is 120 centimeters off the ground. That's taller than some of the gymnasts you're going to see performing. So where does it all begin? They start over on the floor. I've been working with 11-year-old Michelle Conway on a new four-element tumbling line. That's the norm these days. We've taken what she can do well, a two-element line, and now we're going to add on to it. And we do it on a line on the floor because that gives her the same orientation as the beam. And obviously, if you can't stick it on the line, it should never be taken over to beam. There are lots of different progressions a coach can use to help the athlete learn the combination safely. Spotting gives the athlete that extra little physical assistance to help her learn the timing and become consistent and confident. Most gymnasts will start down here on the floor level. They gradually work up to a competitive height beam. There's no magic formula. Some gymnasts learn it in days, others in weeks and months. Up. Good girl. So remember, when you're watching those beam routines today, a lot of hard work between the coach and gymnast went into getting it up here. All right, Carol, many of the fans here at COPS have come to see the beam, which has become a marquee event in gymnastics, and no better beam workers than the Chinese. That's for sure. Their precision and amplitude is definitely world-class, and it seems to run throughout their entire national team. Lots of innovation, just like that. That's called a hand lead, and it was invented by one of her teammates. World champion on the beam right now is Mo Hulan of China. This is Liu Zhuan. And she does a very similar telling line to Mo, just as pretty. Two back handsprings to a perfect straight body layout. Nice Yang Bo jump, again named after the Chinese. The problem. 
problem with the Chinese gymnasts on beam is they make the most difficult skills look so easy. It's very deceptive. Liu can work this event just like she's on the floor. Now that is truly the original Yang Bo. When they do those jumps, they arch backwards, completely losing sight of the beam. Very rare indeed. Currently in second position in the World Challenge to Lilia Podkopayeva. She is just so solid on beam. Everything is very precise. Dismounts were once a weakness for the Chinese national team, but they have worked so hard on their power, strength development. They can easily get up in the air. Perfect. Double back. Well, the crowd erupts for Liu Zhuan of China. It was almost silent as they watched the routine. Here's that incredible tumbling line. Back handspring step out to a two-foot takeoff. Look at that straight body layout. Completely precise, perfect landing. The ultimate in concentration. What a great score for Liu Zhuan of China, a 9-8. That will help her in the standings. And on the vault, Chris Burley, 21 years old of Truro, Nova Scotia. Chris competing right now with a bothersome left ankle, and that will affect his vault. It may, but at Worlds, boy, he had an excellent vault. Only the Russian Nemov can do this vault as well as Chris. Oh, so disappointing. He struggles hard not to put it down on the ground. Now, he had a little concern both with the ankle and the height of the mat. He wasn't sure that they were regulation height. That would affect the amount of air time. There's Yurchenko half on, front pike. You can see just not enough air time to be able to pull it around, but boy, does he fight to stay on his feet. Favoring that ankle, a nine even for Chris Burley. There's one of the coaches of the Canadian team, Lauren Bobkin, there beside him. Alexei Bondarenko now, the 17-year-old Russian, uh, will go to the rings, and he's very much in the hunt for this title. Scott Bondarenko has some big tricks on rings, but we do see evidence of his young inexperience. He hasn't developed a lot of upper body strength yet, and that's what the judges want to see on this event. So he's got some big swinging tricks that needs a little more strength moves. That's his first one. Does a nice plunge. Presses up. Tries to hold a nice position there. Every athlete has to show a press to handstand. It's a B-level skill, and that was his bat. Look at this. Two double backs, swings to a perfect handstand, and stops on a dime. Keeping the rings fairly still. Just the dismount, a full twisting double layout, and he sticks it. Alexei Bondarenko of Russia. He had some really interesting moves in that ring routine. Here they are, double back. Followed by another one. They're called Gazogis. Now watch this. It's so impressive. Swing to handstand. Freezes. Perfect position. 9-3-5 for Bondarenko of Russia on the rings. Now to the beam, Yvonne Tusek of Cambridge, Ontario. And she continues to impress as a very stylish performer. She is a bright light on the Canadian horizon. Such an exciting addition to the Canadian national team. Lots of innovation, and this is a great event for her. Every gymnast shows a tumbling line. This is Yvonne. Back handspring, layout, back handspring, nails it down. What's nice about Yvonne is she's a good tumbler on beam, good jumper, very innovative skills. Now this is where the innovation is right here. She wowed them in Sabai with this front tumbling line. And it's on. Front handspring, front tuck. She is the only one in the world to do that combination. Her rise has been rather dramatic. 12th at the Canadian Championships in Vancouver this spring and already the number one Canadian on the women's team. More innovation. The move that's usually done on uneven bars, and she puts it on the balance beam and rather nicely. Little things like this, this is what the judges want to see. Nice creative walk in an arch, lovely change of level. You hear the bell, she has 10 seconds to stick that dismount. 
Round off, double back. Oh, slight over rotation there. That's going to be a one-tenth deduction. 15-year-old Yvonne Tusak of Cambridge, Ontario. Now here is that amazing tumbling line. Front handspring, front tuck. Most gymnasts in the world aren't even tumbling forward on the beam. Yvonne is already doing it in combination. Second at the Puerto Rico Cup in the beam exercise. 9675 here in Hamilton, Canada's Jason Hardabura at 20 years of age has done plenty of competing internationally. But the chance to compete at home is something he wouldn't dare miss. Well, I've uh, I've traveled uh, to a fair amount of foreign countries and it's a great experience. I love doing it, but I want just for once to, to stay in Canada and compete in front of the whole crowd. I had a chance to go to South Africa, which I turned down and uh, decided to stay here just because, you know, grandparents, friends, and just the whole, it's a big competition, the great athletes, and uh, hopefully that will be a good time. You have to really admire Jason's attitude. He's a competitor, and this is his vault. Sukahara with a full twist, holds on for the landing. This is coach Dave Arnold. Last year, Jason Hardaburo was the mascot at the World Gymnastics Challenge. Now he's right in the thick of things. Here's a Sukahara. Full twist, nicely laid out, a little flat on the landing, but look at that determination. And the result in 9-2 for Hardaburo of Canada on the vault. Now to the rings and Alan Nole, who is very much trying to get into contention here. At 28 years of age, he is very much the veteran of the Canadian team, but shows no signs of losing his edge. This is one event that you can count on. Alan is phenomenally strong and shows it off beautifully here. He just racks up bonus point after bonus point. Back up rise to a perfect Maltese. Exactly what the judges want to see, right into another one, just in case he missed it the first time. He holds his positions long and very precise, exactly like that L cross. Now watch the control. Front giant to handstand. Locks it in. Just the dismount left to do. Full twisting, double layout. Been a member of the men's national team for eight years, and I think he gave that one everything he had. Allen is so innovative on this event. Flips backward to a Lee Ning. Tremendous impact on the shoulders right there. Another Lee Ning. Now watch this. Perfect position. Shoulders right in line with the hands. Look at the score, a 9-5-7-5, so the Canadian veteran continues to contend. Now to the women's competition, the current leader, the world champion, Lilia Podkopayeva of Ukraine. On the beam, she won a silver medal at the world championships. This is a great camera angle. You can see how narrow that target is. That punch front is completely blind. She only has four inches to land on. Although she makes it look rather easy. Lilia is very different with regard to her tumbling skills. Every gymnast in the world does a layout except Lilia. This is her version. Very daring. Shen Flick in the pike position. I can't believe she held on there. Most other gymnasts would be standing on the floor right now. Look at that composure. And that's the sign of a champion. In trouble one minute completely composed the next. More blind moves for Lilia. That's her punch front, very similar to her mount, but she jumps right out of it. Lots of innovation there. The judges are looking for a change of level, and it's often a challenge for the coach and athlete to figure out a creative way to do that. Beautiful jumper. This is the most critical moment of every routine. You want the athlete to stay focused. She's got a good routine going, but the dismount's left to do. Full twisting double back, a little short. Wow, she held on to that nicely. 
Lilia Podkopayeva, by far the most consistent gymnast in the world today. Now this is her tumbling line. Two back hamstrings like all the other gymnasts, but look at this. Pike, shin flick, holds on to it. No room for error there, but she just does not let it go. Well, a fall would have been disaster. She held on a 9-5-7-5. That's her lowest score to date and will make things interesting in terms of this all-around competition. Now Wang Warung of China heads to the vault. Now, if you notice, he's looking down to his left side. Beside him on the ground is a tape measure. Every gymnast has a precise mark they want to run from. He gets his right on. Ooh, a little flat off the horse. Needed more airtime there. Part of the gold medal team for China at the World Championships. Back-to-back -back gold medals. Now watch. Off the board, he looks good, but his shoulders are slightly in front there. Doesn't allow him to get the good bump or the airtime he needs. And it's a 9-1-5 on the vault for Wang Wadung, so the early line favorite is in trouble in the all-around competition. Now we head to an American gymnast. This is Jer Lynch of the United States. Competes for Stanford University when he's not with the U.S. national team. And he'll go to the rings. Jer has some nice innovation in this routine, especially at the end. You want to keep your eye on the dismount. He's trained it really well all week. Okay, now that was supposed to be a Maltese, and he has to hold it. That one's better. The judges must see a clear, precise decision for two seconds. Little struggle there. He's turning the rings in, touching the cables. That will have to be a deduction, but look at that. There's a Gazogi right to a Lin Ning, and he stops in a perfect L-sit. The 1991 U.S. Olympic Festival, he set a record by winning five gold medals. And he did it with tricks like that. World-class Russian gymnast is named a Belenov. Jer Lynch of the United States, 9-4, his result on the rings. Now you're going to want to pay attention here because this is Alexandra Marinescu of Romania. 14 years old, she is the reigning European junior champion and her rising star. The Romanians have a long tradition of excellence on this event. The most solid, consistent team in the world. Marinescu getting ready for her tumbling line. Back handspring, back handspring, layout, layout, four elements in a row. She makes it look so easy. Just miss winning a medal at the World Championships in Sabai. She was fourth on the balance beam. This is an event she won at the European Junior Championships. With moves just like that. The Romanian team is the one team challenging the Chinese for innovation in the jump area. They're all starting to do Yang Bo jumps. Those are those nicely arched back jumps. A full turn is a requirement. Athletes can do doubles or triples, but most do single full turns. Oh, nice, innovative tumbling. So refreshing to see. That was a side summy. Most gymnasts tumble only backwards, some forwards. It's nice to see some side tumbling. She takes a little breath there. Getting ready. Needs to get psyched up. This is a big dismount for her. Two back handspring, full twisting double back. Only a small step. At 14 years of age, an integral part of the World Championship gold medal team for Romania, Alexandra Marinescu. The temptation is to rush the dismount, especially when you've got a good routine going. Here you can see she cuts her set a little bit, doesn't get the airtime she needs. That's going to result in a one-tenth deduction. Still a 9.8 for Marinescu on the beam. Here's how it stands on the women's side to date. Lilia Podkobaeva has the lead wire to wire. Liu Zhuan of China, second. Romania's Turgerland is third. Ivan Tusek of Canada right now is fifth. Here's Terry Leibel. This is Yvonne Tusek from Canada. Her coach, Alvira Sadi. And first, Yvonne, how do you feel so far about midway through the competition for you? Um, well, I was... I was happy 
how I was doing, but I was, know I can do better, so it, I was a little bit upset, and it gives me something to work for. You're being a little hard on yourself in this uh, pretty early in your international career. Um, no, because if I'm not hard on myself, I won't improve, so it helps me if I'm mad at myself. I <laughs> want to work harder. Listen, Alvira, those are the kind of words you like to hear, I guess. Um, actually, I'm happy how she's doing because she uh, don't have good experience, and international experience is so neat for her, and this competition, I hope, then uh, help her. Absolutely, undoubtedly will help the Canadians. Good luck the rest of the way, Yvonne. Thank you. All right, Terry, lots of movement in the men's dynamic. Oliver Walther of Germany into the lead. Canada's Alan Nole competing well again. Last year's runner-up is tied with Alexei Bondarenko of Russia. Up next, they'll take a trip to the falls as the Subway World Challenge continues. This is exactly what the 22 athletes at the World Challenge did midweek. China's Liu Zhuan tossed a penny into the raging water, perhaps wishing for success at the Atlanta Olympics just around the corner. As usual, there were shopping trips involved. Peter Nicky Farrow looking for that perfect hat to remind him of Canada. The Botanical Garden's always a great attraction, particularly in light of the chilly climes in Canada these days. And of course, the athletes from seven countries have never seen anything quite like the familiar main street of touristy Niagara Falls. Back inside, Cops Coliseum in Hamilton and rotation number five. Go to the balance beam, and this is Mirela Tugerland of Romania, surprisingly contending very well. We're going to see a very similar routine to Alexander Marinescu. They train together in Bucharest. Same coaches, very similar composition. Here's her tumbling line. Back handspring, layout, back handspring, layout. Four elements, just like the one we described in Chakta. So much confidence on the part of Tugerland on the beam that was just done as if it was a matter of course. You really have to admire her ability to focus on the task at hand. She's very young and she's worked very, very hard. She has her sights set on Atlanta. is part of the routine it, judges want to see it allows the athletes to rest and they're trying to be as creative as they can back handspring quarter holds on to the handstand nice change of levels chest stand dances right out of it there's her yang bow as we mentioned, the Romanians are trying to emulate the Chinese with that innovative jump combinations. Two back handsprings, double cut, nails it down solid. Another solid routine for Mirella Tugerla of Romania. She was the bronze medalist at the European Championships this year. Her teammate, Alexandra Marinescu, won it. Here's a look at that back handspring quarter. It's called an Emilianchik, named after the former Soviet superstar, Oksana Emilianchik. Tugerland looking at a 9.75 on the beam to keep her very much in contention. Here is Alan Nole, last year's runner-up, now heading for the vault. The difference between men's vault and women's vault, the men only get one shot at it, so they have to be completely focused, really aggressive, first time. Sukahara, layout, full twist is currently tied in second place with Alexei Bondarenko. Seems to be favoring an ankle there as he's greeted by his coaches Dave Arnold and Lauren Bobkin. He looks good and solid. Sukahara laid out, nicely laid out, but a slight hop to the side. I think he jarred his ankle on the impact of the landing. Well, that's his lowest score of the meet so far, a 9-2-5 for Alan Nole on the vault. Now to Wang Wadong of China, who was very weak on his last event, now trying to make up for it on the parallel bars. And this event he can easily make it up on. He makes it look like men Kai bar. He has high flying tricks all over the place. He starts right away. Watch this giant 
There it is, the double back. And then looks so solid. Healy twirl. Healy twirl. Now he did pause a bit in between those, so he won't get those valuable bonus points. But here he goes again, another double back. Set up for the dismount, stood, and pulls a very nice double pipe, hangs on. Indeed he did hang on, did not take the step on the dismount. Here is that high flying double back, there's the giant, big swing into it, double back. That's called a ballet, named after the German, what an impact on those upper arms. One of the strongest Chinese gymnasts in the world today, Wang Wadong, a 9-5 on the parallel bars. Just checking over some of the video that was taken of that event. Now we go to Elena Grosheva on the beam for Russia. This is a perfect coaching angle. Look at that narrow target. The judges sit at the side, so they never see the routine from that perspective. Many coaches at home in the training gym will stand at the end of the beam to see any technical errors that are causing the gymnast to fall. And she just covered an error quite nicely. She has a three-element tumbling line. She must have felt slightly off, stopped, and decided to hold back at two. Ooh, she is struggling, but quite determined to stay on. There's her Emilianchek. A lot of athletes are doing that skill now because it is given a D value. Very valuable, E being the most valuable. Talk about the Russian men being disappointed at the World Championships. The Russian women did not win a team medal either. And you know they'd like to make up for that. Leonard, Leonid Arkayev was telling me that they have gone home, they've reworked routines, and they are fiercely approaching Atlanta with a new attitude. Her dismount roundup, double tuck, a little short. Well, they're hoping Elena Grosheva will be a big part of the story in Atlanta for Russia as she finishes up here on the beam. Here's some nice, innovative side tumbling. That's a side tummy, but watch. She fights hard. She has to react quickly to cover. 9.75 for a score, and she's right up there with the contenders on that apparatus. Now, Eugeny Podgorny, young Russian, to the parallel bars. And just looking at those armbands, you know he has some big tricks coming. Starts with a simple enough tip straddle cut. Front uprise, double front. Now it almost looks like he missed his hand there, but he continued on. Healy twirl, Healy twirl, double front. And just the fact that he puts them together in combination, huge bonus points. That's exactly what the judges are looking for. Very original dismount. Double front half out. Just 18 years old, seventh all around at the European Championships, the European Junior Championships in 1994. That's the first Healy twirl. The judges want to see this. Big tricks in combination right to the double front. Look at his left hand. It missed, causing tremendous impact on that upper arm. 9-4-5 for Russia's Podgorny on the P-bars. Travis Romagnoli is the youngest member of the Canadian men's team. He's had to deal with tremendous disappointment at not qualifying for the Atlanta Olympics yet. After we didn't make the Olympics in Sabai, uh, I took some time off to think of what I want to do with, you know, gymnastics and everything. Um, but I, I started training, and it was tough to train at first. But then training for this competition would be, is, uh, has helped motivate me a little bit. It's, this will be a stepping stone for me um, for the Puerto Rico World uh, Individual World Championships uh, to be held in April of 96. And Scott, we are delighted that Travis decided to come back to gymnastics, and he has come back stronger than ever. This is a great event for him. Full 
twisting Sukahara. Great air time. Fourth all around at this year's national championships in Vancouver. Now watch, he's really got to bump up off the horse to get that laid out full twist in. Beautifully done. Score for Travis Romagnoli on the vault, a 9-1-5. He talked about qualifying for Atlanta, the disappointment for the Canadians. They'll try to get three to the Olympic Games. Chris Burley hoping to be one, but they'll have to make the top 20 at the World Championships upcoming in Puerto Rico, the event finals, and we'll be there to cover that for you. Right now, Chris Burley, the Canadian champion on the P-Bars. Chris has really nice alignment on this event. The judges are impressed by his innovation, just like that. Two Healy twirls to a hop three quarter on one bar. Nice Stutz. Getting ready for the dismount. He's got a double pike, and he drills it into the ground. Well, Chris has had a tough world challenge to date, but that P-bar routine looked pretty solid. He's getting huge bonus points with this great combination. Healy twirl, Healy twirl, no hesitation, right into an impeccable hop three-quarter. Well, Chris talks it over with his coach, Yegor Kolesnikov of Gymnastics Mississauga, and they're talking about a 9-3 on the P-bars for the Canadian champion, Chris Burley. After four events, Alan Nole of Canada has moved into the lead, 28 years old and still moving along. Peter Nicky Farrow is second. A Russian and a Chinese are tied for third. Here's Terry Leibel. Joining me now, Canadian gymnast Travis Romanoli and his coach, Igor Kolesnikov, who, listen to this, has coached the Russian team for 25 years, now coaches Canadians. What does it mean to Canadian gymnastics to have a coach of this quality? Well, Igor's been helping me out for the last uh, four months, and he's been a great help, and I'm sure in the next couple of years we'll see, we'll see some improvements, and with his help, I hope, you know, to do some great things. Igor, you've coached in four Olympic Games for the Soviet yeah. Union. How are our Canadian boys? Very good. Canadian boys, very good. Good looking. Travis, very good boy. How are you How are you assessing them at this competition? How are they doing here? Okay, very good. Uh, problems, I'm little time work. Chris, Travis. Four months on. Yes. Four months only. You've got less than a year to get them ready. Good luck yeah. to both of you today. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. It's very tight. Liu Zhuan has bumped Lilia Podkopayeva out of the lead. The world champion now third. Mirella Tugerlan of Romania is second. The battle will be waged on the floor. Coliseum, the men are gearing up for their marquee event. It's the high bar, one of the most breathtaking spectacles in the sport. Carol Orchard takes a trip to the top of the bar in this chapter of Chalk Talk. Look up, look up, look way up. I'm at high bar, 255 centimeters off the ground to be exact. And if you're looking for high flying excitement, then high bar is the event for you. It appears simple enough, but a closer look reveals this is a narrow steel bar, and it's unforgiving when it comes to errors. A high bar routine consists of elements of pure swing. No stops or hesitations are allowed. According to the judging requirements, each gymnast must show at least one release move. But what's the current trend on high bar? The more releases, the better. At the recent World Championships in Japan, we witnessed Krasimir Dunov of Bulgaria doing six release moves. That means he spent more time off of the bar than on it. When the men practice those daring release moves, they do it here over a foam pit. It allows them to concentrate just on catching the bar as opposed to being worried about the impact of a fall. Now the only problem is, how do I get out of here? All right, well, I guess I'll have to handle this until Carol gets out of the pit. Rotation number six, Wang Wadung on the high bar. And as Carol said, we're looking for big release skills, and Wang Wadung needs a few of them. He's got some ground to make up in the all-around competition. Wang is a tradition of former Chinese superstars like Tong Fei with daring innovation. Starts with two overgrip endos. Getting all of his requirements out of the way. Stoop and dislocate. The judges need to see that. But now watch. Oh, incredible. Laid out Jaeger. He does it from eagle grip. That gives it the most difficult E value. Now watch his wind up. Double twisting, double leg. 
Wang Wadong of China. Solid routine on the high bar. Now watch his last giant. He pikes it right there. That technique was developed by Tong Fei. It allows the gymnast to get big air time for huge distances like that double-double. Seems pleased with the result, and well, he should be a 9-6-5 for Wadong. That'll bring him up in the standings. Cambridge, Ontario's Yvonne Tusek was the highest placing Canadian individually at the recent World Championships in Japan. Her floor exercise is unique and full of flair. Um, I had a rhythmic choreographer do my floor routine, and it's a complete change from my old floor routine. I went com a completely different style, and when I go out there, I just think of showing what I can do and having fun. Scott, get ready, because Imam puts on quite a show here. Big Arabian double front. Oh, she's on today, right into a triple twist. Yvonne used to have a floor routine very similar to a ballet performance. Now, no longer traditional, anything but. choreography. She's really learning to express herself lots of passion. done three tumbling lines and this is her fourth. Really well done. Front tumbling. Oh, we like it. One of the most unique floor routines that we'll see here at the World Challenge belongs to 15-year-old Yvonne Tusek of Canada. Here's that incredible line. Watch the airtime. Arabian double front kicks it out perfectly to a really precise landing. Elvira Sadi, your coach, hugs Yvonne. 9-7 on the floor. Just an outstanding result for the young Canadian. Now here's Alan Nole as he continues to challenge here. And he's going for the win in this competition. Now at Worlds, the P-bars are weighted down through the podium to the floor, but here at Cops Coliseum, they're just sitting on the floor. So Coach Dave Arnold is going to hold on to counterbalance that action of Allen's mount. Now he's getting ready for the big trick. Beautiful diameter up to one bar. Nice side hop. Back toss with good amplitude. He needs a good dismount. Double pipe. Holds on with just a step. Alan Nole of Canada. Needs to score well in the P-bars. Alan showing a lot of class here. Very nice. Back toss. Immediate double pipe. Holds on a little too long. He'll have to take the one-tenth deduction. Well, he's the hometown hero, and 9-3 makes things very tight in this all-around competition. But he's still very much in contention. Now to the floor, and the world champion, Lilia Podkopayeva. Lilia is a front tumbling expert, and she has a line that no one in the world does. Double front. Now in Safai, she did that with a half out. And it's just as impressive without the half. World champion needs to nail this. She's currently in third position. Scott, this is a great event for her. So she could really move up in the standings here. She's got a perfect balance of dance and tumbling. Beautiful tumbling line, just like the men do. the 
medical routine. She's very elegant. Now this is when she really starts to get tired. She's already done three lines and her last line is huge. Good speed in her run is going to be imperative to get the momentum she needs to punch it up. Full twisting double pipe. Gorgeous. Well, the world champion finishes it off, and she's hoping to put all kinds of pressure on Mirella Tugerlan of Romania and Liu Zhuan of China. Now, this is her third tumbling line, and it's exactly the one the men do. There's the front layout, front full, and she does it just as well as the male competitors. Talking it over with Alex Bard, one of the Canadian coaches originally from Ukraine, along with Svetlana Dikteva, awaiting her marks a 9-8 on the floor which will move Podkopayeva provisionally back into the lead. Now back to the men's high bar, and Yevgeny Podgorny of Russia. The Russians have always had big tricks on high bars, but they have been haunted by a lot of mistakes and falls, both in Dortmund and in Sabai. Beautiful, laid out Tkachev, straddled Tkachev, right into a ginger. And those are those big release moves we were talking about. What's so impressive is he does them immediately in combination. All he has left to do now is the dismount. Watch, he'll pike it over the top. That's that beat, famous beat developed by Tongfei the Chinese. Beautiful. Layout double double. Well, wow, three consecutive release skills early in the routine for Yugeni Podgorny of Russia. Now to get these big release moves in a row, your timing has to be right on in order to be in the perfect position for the immediate release coming up. And he is right on. The steel bar is actually quite flexible, and there you can see it really throws him up in the air for the big air time. Sure hands, a 9-4 for Podgorny on the high bar. I'll go back to the floor, and Alexandra Marinescu, the European junior champion, 14 years of age. Scott, we talked a lot about Marinescu being trained in Bucharest with the junior national team. She has really different choreography than the traditional Romanian style. Nice full twisting double back. Team because she likes to be mysterious and I can really see it coming out here. Double twist. Very few athletes can do a front double twist. Marinescu had a fall here in the World Challenge. Many had expected her to contend for the all-around title. She's being overshadowed by her teammate Mirella Tugerland. and final tumbling now. Triple twist. All three very impressive tumbling lines for such a young athlete. Strong finish to what has been a difficult competition for Alexandra Marinescu. There's her coach, Baron Parato. We'll have one more look at that floor routine, and you talked about the strong finale. The triple twist is with the best of times, but to put it in at the end when you're fatigued, this kid has a lot of potential. And there's the reward, 985. That's the highest score to date on the women's floor exercise. Just to give you an idea, Lilia Podkopayeva, the world champion, had a 9-8. Now to the parallel bars, and Alexei Bondarenko of Russia, very much in contention for the all-around title with Alan Nole of Canada and Wang Wadong of China. The Russians are known for very good form. 
great alignment. And on this event, that's very important. The judges want to see solid, straight handstands. Healy twirl, healy twirl, right into a very nice hop three-quarter to one bar. And he goes hop three-quarter to grab the other bar. Moves like this. Stutz has to land right in the handstand, just like that back toss. Double pike dismount. Ooh, a little short. He will be deducted for that step forward. And it's a 9-5-5 for Bondarenko. That will keep him in contention. With one apparatus to go, Alan Nole of Canada clings to the lead. Then it's China's Wang Wadong and Russia's Alexei Bondarenko, as we said. The high bar will make the difference there. On the women's side, Liu Zhuan of China in first, Mirella Tugerlan of Romania, and the world champion Lilia Podkopayeva. Remember, the Florex is still to count. Up next, high hopes on the high bar. Canada's Alan Nole tries to hit a difficult routine when we return to Cops Coliseum in Hamilton in just a moment. Welcome back to Cops Coliseum for the seventh and final rotation of the World Gymnastics Challenge. This will make the difference. And first up on the high bar, Travis Romagnoli, the youngest competitor for Canada here in Hamilton. And he is an aggressive high bar worker. He's not afraid to take chances. Remember back to the 1995 national championships he was trying every release move in the book and there's a big one a layout to Kachev, right into an overgrip endo half but he's got some more and here they are beautiful to catch up both in the straddle position very impressive air time Fulfilling a requirement here. Stoop in dislocate, but he punches it right through to handstand. Layout. Full twisting double layout. Gorgeous. Well, a nice reaction from the crowd for the finest routine of the day by Travis Romagnoli, the 19-year-old. Now, this is the one of the requirements the judges are looking for, but watch where he punches it out right to handstand. That is a textbook example, a perfect technique. And a strong 9-6 for Romagnoli of Canada on the high bar, and he likes that result. Now move to the floor exercise and the final routine for Elena Grosheva of Russia. She's a good tumbler, learning to be quite dramatic as she develops through this sport. Pike full in, lots of air time there. Nice, front tumbling, front double twist. The trick in women's floor is to look passionate, express yourself, and get enough air into you so you're rested for that tumbling line. Another front tumbling line, ending with a front pull. gymnast should tell a story with her dance, really capture the attention and the imagination of the audience and judges. Russians fourth at the World Team Championships in Survive, but they're in good shape for Atlanta. Svetlana Horkina is on their team, Dina Kachakova, and also Grosheva. Two and a half twists. Now watch this. I love this ending. Very creative. She slides about three feet there. Spectacular. Nice finish for Elena Grosheva of Russia. There is Arkayev, the dominant coach in Russia. 9-7, the final result on the Russia. floor exercise Alexei for Grosheva. Now to another Russian, Alexei Bondarenko on the high bar. A critical routine for him, still within sight of Alan Nole and the all-around championship here. Bondarenko chooses to have his coach help him onto the high bar. Each athlete likes to adjust his grip. Some like to jump up on their own, and others like their coach to assist them. No deduction either way. Huge Kovacs right into a hop full. He is on. More releases to come. Layout to Kachev, straddle to Kachev. We talked about release moves. The more, the better. And he is really wowing the judges today. Now, if you notice, 
That stoop and dislocate wasn't nearly as kicked out to the handstand as Travis had done. Full twisting double air. And just a tiny step back, but he holds the dismount. Now, Bondarenko is currently in third position behind Alan Nole and Wang Wadung of China. What is so amazing about this combination is the fact that he does the Kovac and does the hop giant pull right out of it. It's incredibly difficult to control a Kovac in order to get the second relief. 9-5 is the result for Alexei Bondarenko on the high bar. That's going to put some pressure on the Canadian Alan Nole. There is the women's current leader, Lilia Podkopayeva, the world champion. She has finished her floor exercise and is in the clubhouse, so to speak. She's in good shape, but can still be challenged by Mirella Tugerland of Romania. Tugerland needs a 9-7-8-8 to tie Podkopayeva. Mirella has very traditional Romanian geography. Very distinctive Romanian style. Whip to tuck full in, holds onto it nicely at the end there. You talk about that traditional Romanian style. The judges seem to love it, and the Romanians have got a stable of young stars coming up. Alexandra Marinescu, 14. She's only 15, and they are already the world team champions. What a great future they've got. Now, the trick is not to look as though you're resting in the corner. Keep the choreography going. This is her second tumbling line. Whip to two and a half twists. Ooh, a little rebound, but she does not go out of bounds. Very little room for error. A reminder, she needs a 9-7-8-8 to tie Podkopayeva for the lead. Now, this is when the athlete's legs start to feel heavy. She's feeling fatigued. She's got to push through. There's the round off back handspring. Triple twist. Very impressive. And it's a nice finish for Mirella Tugerlin of Romania. As her teammates and her coach look on, 9788 is the score that she needs. Even in slow motion, you can see that Morella has an incredible triple twist. This is in the last line, and her form is very neat indeed. She likes the routine, but it's not enough to catch Podkopaeva. 9-7-2-5 for Mirella Tugerlan of Romania, and that means that Lilia Podkopaeva, the world champion, is the all-around champion here at the World Challenge, and she's won her first major competition since her world title, and that has to be a boost. Now, here's the story as far as Canadians are concerned. Alan Nole on the high bar, and there's Wang Wadung, the current leader. Nole on the high bar would need a 9.575 to tie Wang Wadung. Anything higher, and he is the champion. Oh, Scott, my heart's going out to Alan. He has worked so hard, this would be a great moment for Canadian gymnastics if he could just nail this routine. And it's a big one. Huge Kovacs. Will he do the second release? There it is. It's a death. Unbelievable. He hasn't competed both those releases in quite some time in one routine. Oh, Scott, he's really going for this here. Just has a big dismount to go. Full twisting double leg. Nary a step, Alan Nole. I'll tell you what, the arena was silent while he was up on the bar, and now it explodes. Alan Nole of Canada. Recall, he needs a 9.575 or better to be the champion. And look at this. That is an absolutely huge callback, and the next one is the biggest release move in the book. A death, virtually blind. He is right on the money. Final score for Alan Nole from Canada on high bar. 9.6. They needed a 9.57. They got to 9.6. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> you did not know when I came up to you a second ago, you didn't even know you were in that position. No. I was just uh, I was just trying to go through today. I mean, there's some uh, great competitors here, but there were some mistakes. And uh, I basically just, just went through my events. And, uh, do you remember talking to me just before the meet? I didn't think for sure. And, and we were just talking. You said, ah, listen, I'm just here. I'm going to do a good day of business. But look at what this day did for you. I didn't expect to beat last year's uh, last year's 
you know, finish second place is, you know, amazing. So I'm just speechless right now. It's been... Articulate for our audience at home what this means for Alan Nole, a veteran who has done it all. What does this mean to you? Uh, it's just a good feeling to, to come in, you know, and there's a lot of pressure here with your family. A lot of people from my school are here, and uh, it feels so good just to be able to perform in front of, uh, in front of the fans when it counts, you know. So. Alan Nole, job well done. Pretty good day at work, eh? Yeah, not bad, not bad. All right, Scott, up to you. All right, Terry, there's the story. Alan Nole of Canada hits the high bar to soar slightly beyond Wang Hodong of China. Alexi Bondarenko is third. The rest of the Canadians well back. National champion Chris Burley nursing a slight ankle problem winds up eighth. On the women's side, world champion Lilia Podkopaeva has delivered in her first major challenge since her triumph at Safai, but it was close enough. Yvonne Tusak of Cambridge, Ontario, a solid sixth in an elite field. Ukraine's world champion wins at the World Challenge will return to Cops Coliseum one final time in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to the 1995 Subway World Gymnastics Challenge. Here is the scene as a celebration is well underway for Canadian Alain Nole. Here is the man who overwhelmed the world today, capturing the gold medal in the individual all-round. I'm going to tell you something. I was over in that area with him right after his high bar routine. He had no idea he was in a position to win this thing. It's an amazing story. Hamilton is one stop en route to Atlanta next summer's Olympic Games. Next up for world gymnasts is on to Atlanta itself and the Georgia Dome for a test run of that facility. And then ultimately on to the Puerto Rican World Championships where Canadians will desperately try and meet the Canadian standard, which is much higher than the Olympic one to make it to Atlanta. With their final thoughts, let me send you upstairs to Scott Russell and Carol Orchard. Well, thanks very much, Terry. And you know, Carol, they say that when the money's on the line, some competitors come through. Alan Nole is one of those competitors. He was second at this meet last year. This year, he's the champion. What can you say? It was an outstanding performance. What an incredible moment for Canadian gymnastics. Alan Nole could have held back, played safe on the high bar to win, but that's not the Alan that we know. He threw two of the toughest tricks in the book. I still have goosebumps just thinking about it. You know, he's been to the Olympics twice. He hasn't qualified for Atlanta yet. You have to think that this is a good start. He's got to be on an incredible high right now. He is in a perfect position for Atlanta. On the women's side, Lilia Podkopaeva, the world champion. Everyone expected her to win this meet. She did. But do you think she was at the top of her game? She wasn't in top form, but every athlete peaks for a certain meet. Lilia peaked perfectly in Sabai. Here she's in good enough shape to hit four for four. She deserved to win today. Yvonne Tusak of Cambridge, Ontario, the top Canadian woman. A personal observation here. She executes well, but she also seems to have a great deal of style. A lot of flair, and the judges just love her. Another impressive moment for Canadian to... Yvonne is in perfect mode right now, heading into Atlanta. All right, Carol, very impressive. Lilia Podkopaeva of Ukraine, the women's champion. Alan Nole of Canada wins it at Cops for the men. Back down to Terry. All right, Scott, what a tremendous example of the combination of corporate sponsorship with amateur athletics in Canada. We have heard it from athletes, administrators, coaches, that Canadian athletes are missing out on valuable international experience. Such has not been the case today. The world has come to Hamilton, and the Canadians are the direct beneficiaries. A reminder that coming up next, World Cup skiing from Lake Louise. Brian Williams, Ken Reed, Scott Oak, Karen Lee Gartner will have that for you tonight. It is a